What is the craziest or pettiest thing that's ever killed or almost killed one of your deals? A refrigerator seal. <laughs> when you, before you answered, you looked at me and I knew you were going to say something stupid. <laughs> a refrigerator seal that costs yeah. maybe a hundred dollars to fix. Yeah, maybe. Did you fix it? Well, the agent, because my clients just kept coming back. It was, I was actually representing the buyers. Okay. And the buyers were the ones that were like freaking out. Just, yeah. Yeah. They were, they were, um, very particular. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Behind the Lockbox. I'm Stephanie Zalowski. Cam is out today, but she will be back next week. But today, I have Monroe Harrington with me. Welcome. Thank you, Steph. Yes. <laughs> Monroe is the founder of Monroe Harrington Real Estate Group with EXP. He specializes in multi-units as well as some pretty epic waterfronts down in Mission and Pacific Beach. You've got some sick listings down there, my friend, as well as other areas in San Diego. And also at Reba, I heard you recently pitch, you've started a new venture called Tide Rentals, where yep. you're managing vacation rentals. Yep. Congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here. Welcome <laughs> to Behind the Lockbox. box. Really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So when you, when I called you to ask you to do this I was like think of a few stories and you came in today and we were kind of chatting about like this might go in a little bit of a different direction which I love because yeah. we've had a lot of people finding dildos lately and to be honest with you like maybe it can go in a different direction let's be a little more mature right it's supposed to be a real estate <laughs> podcast like I don't know anyway so yeah. I'm yeah. gonna rely on you for that so yeah. where do you want to start well yeah I was looking through all my transactions actually on the way here yeah. and trying to find some stories yeah. and I knew that there would be some good ones in there yes. so I think what I came up with was more interesting from a success standpoint. And how long have you been in the business? So I've been in the business 10 years. Okay. Yeah, so we've been almost, yeah. yeah, I got in a little bit after you, but yeah, so it's, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You yeah. know, we kind of got in in 2013 when the market was mm -hmm. barely bouncing back is still at the bottom. And then, yes. you know, we've seen it, we've written, written it up and yep. everywhere and now in between. We're, I don't know where we are, to be honest with yeah. you. I don't know what way is up most days right yeah, now, but yeah. you know, it's good. We're still closing deals, which I'm thankful for. Yep. So yes. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So tell me your first one. Hit, hit me. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So uh, let's see, which one do I want to bring up first? Uh, I think, okay. So I'll, I'll talk about 17, 1701 Oceanfront Street, which okay. was actually a, a property down in Sunset Cliffs okay. in Ocean Beach that I closed earlier this year. And it, it had views on that street for anyone who doesn't know where that is on Sunset Cliffs. It is stunning. Yeah. yeah. Probably one of the in most insane views I've seen yes. in San Diego. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a you know beautiful mid-century modern home. Mm. Very large. Kind of sticks out on a peninsula. So there's oh, southern yeah. facing views down the coast as well as you know west and north of course. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Pretty, pretty cool property. But you when, know, it was, when was this? So that was in Q1. Okay. One of this year. Oh, this year. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, when you said Mitsu, I'm like, wait, this sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah. I remember this listing. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It was a pretty, pretty famous property. You yes. know, um, yeah, the guy that who owned it and, mm. you know, the foundation, all the money proceeds went to San Diego Foundation actually yes. from the seller side. So, which is so huge, cool. huge donation, one of the biggest donations they've ever had. But that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I think one of the most interesting things was how I met the client. Ooh, um, yeah. So last year, as you were saying, the market's kind of up, down, you know, towards the end of last mm -hmm. year, things started really slowing down. Yes. And at the beginning of the year, things are cranking. Obviously, yeah. deals are just falling in our laps. And yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, um, you know, I have a lot of mortgages that I had to pay, a lot of expenses mm -hmm. going out and didn't realize how how much that was just draining my accounts every month it's until wild. the end of last year. I was like, oh, my gosh, I better get my, you know, shit together um <laughs> get your shit together yeah, girl like yeah gotta get it one, done 100 percent yeah you know, it's terrifying because uh i had a lot of fun last year my production you know regrettably dropped about in half but yeah. i you know got a lot of travel like in and lived a little bit i remember I, I, I did. you needed it i did yeah after covid when we yeah. again i'm very thankful like i'm i think most people did agents anyway did really well you know during covid totally. but like it, there was a burnout phase like yeah. there really was and it hit me too yeah. and i was like i need a break like at, to one point brett was like are you you're not gonna quit are you and i'm like <laughs> i just need to, i just need i just need like a month like right. i need a break because it was burning the candle at both ends it's stressful right and it's non-stop 24 7 so totally. i don't fault you for that but yeah. then yeah. we come back and we're like 
oh shit, I gotta get another deal. Like we're, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, it was it was actually a blessing in disguise Good. what happened and the and the slow of the market and the interest Good. rate hikes, you know, caused things to slow down yes. so much. So I was like, okay, well, time to start implementing those those disciplines back Absolutely. into my, my routine and yep. And I did, and I actually made some cold calls. So I started okay. cold calling again, okay. uh, which was something I did a lot Good back in you. 2018 through 2022 yeah. pretty consistently. Okay. And so I made a call, met this guy, or ended up speaking to him for about 40 minutes. So he was, was like, off a cold call. was off a cold call and ended up talking to him the year before. Wow. And he was a super nice guy. And he was like, yeah, you know what? You know, We might entertain the idea of selling because he knew the, the permitting regulation for short-term rentals were going to be coming down the pipe. Oh yes, and that's so, new. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So he knew that that was coming, and he was like, you "Were know, they we, vacation renting this?" They property? were vacation renting it. So it was okay. him and his buddy that owned it okay. as a short term rental. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they weren't. It wasn't like a family living in it. Like whatever. Definitely not. Okay. No. No. Pretty. Okay. Pretty typical Mission Beach oceanfront yes. owner. Yeah. So they're renting it out as a short term rental. That's awesome. And uh, ironically, one of the units below Rob Brown's listing that he has oh, up yeah. there on the oceanfront. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so ended up chatting with the owner and was like, you know, just curious if you have any interest in selling. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, they, they said, yeah, maybe we're not looking at listing it, but if you have some clients you want to show it to, I was like, as a matter of fact, I do. So I ended up showing the property a couple times. Okay. Nothing ended up really resulting sure. out of that per se, but I stayed sure. in touch with the owner and followed up with him, you know, wow. periodically. Yeah. As you and do. And once the... Uh, perm short term rental regulations got implemented mm -hmm. in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I called him and he was like, you know what? We are actually getting more serious about listing the property. Mm. So, had they not, for anyone who doesn't know, this is a new requirement where you now have to have a license to, mm -hmm. in order to VRBO or Airbnb your home. Right. And we thought it was going to go into a lottery, but it didn't pretty much everyone who applied on the up and up got it because I think so many people were running their Airbnbs willy-nilly by themselves and they weren't paying like the tot tax or whatever right so had they not applied for that license then or that were they they, I mean, they, they did owe, they did apply for it they, they just they got waitlisted no uh, they got waitlisted oh, yeah so right now okay. for example like in tier three tier three and tier four are the only permits that have uh limits on Correct. them. tier three there's still probably about a thousand permits that's oh, for wow. the city of okay. san diego so you can still get those anywhere yep. in the city except for Mission Beach. Mission Beach falls under tier four. They're essentially the same thing. Correct. Only tier four is Mission because Beach. Because all so. of San Diego, it was like went down to like what, 1%, but then Mission Beach and PB basically got like 30%, which yeah. is why the, the different tiers. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm with R you. Roughly, roughly mm -hmm. in, that, in that ballpark. I think mm -hmm. it might've been closer to 40. Oh, was but it? They, okay, but they ended up, it ended up going over that and there's still about 130 people on the wait list that did not get their tier four, maybe, maybe even a little bit more. Well, think about it. Anyone who's been to Mission Beach or Pacific yeah. Beach who has come and vacationed where do they stay we don't have a lot of ho there's like no hotels down there i mean there's a few but like it's airbnbs and vrbos it's all the beach yeah. houses that people rent which is why they had to open up such a higher percentage versus like la jolla or anywhere else yeah, yeah and, and it did kind of end up backfiring in that, in that <laughs> regard because if they just kind of bulked it all in there's only 130 people on the wait list there's still a thousand uh tier threes left mm -hmm. they, everybody would have been and we'd right. still have probably and 900 need them. but know. you know it, it it ultimately is what it is right. um but my client unfortunately didn't end up getting their permit. Okay. And so, so that's why they were like, look, we're going to go ahead and, and probably list it. Potentially then. list okay. it. So we end up scheduling a very, very late. So they're not from here, right? They're staying in town. Okay. They're staying at the unit. We end up scheduling a very late uh, listing appointment. It was like 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Oh, God. I end up showing up and- For these, you and I who want to be in bed by 9 o'clock, this is like not good. Yeah, these guys are <laughs> but these guys are hilarious, right? They're, they're like good old boys. They were just golfing all day. Oh, my God. On the golf course, you know, having a good time. Having drinks. Having drinks. And we get back, and I'm not kidding, from the time that I sat down with them to the time they finished, they polished off an entire bottle of bourbon oh. between the two of them. <laughs> no way. So the conversation just cut, and you know, like, you know how hard it is to keep- things on track sometimes imagine guys that are yeah yeah no it was it, you had your work it, it was cut funny. out for you yeah they were like you sure you don't want any you know whiskey and i was like i'm They're not like, gonna i'm technically uh, working yeah, right now yeah, but like okay yeah, i do want some but no yeah, i can't no, so yeah. I, I you know i i refrained from drinking that <gasps> oh night but it was pretty funny i'm not gonna lie it was pretty entertaining That's but hysterical. once nine o'clock rolled around i'm kind of going through everything i'm like i don't know if this is like oh really fully going anywhere yeah you and know? also you're like you got to be in a sound mind to like make a decision but like yeah okay yeah and and you know keeping that energy up on a listing presentation right. for you know 
people in extended yeah they're drinking and you're trying to like go through at like the end of my work marketing yeah. stuff you no, know but what they I mean? were listening like, they're being respectful at the end of that's the day good. it was a good conversation good. you know but we were going through a ton of different information they had a lot of good. questions and i'm sure they also appreciated how prepared you were and like all that stuff totally yeah, yeah. yeah. no they're good like we had a great rapport and that's, that's probably good. why i ended up being there like oh, they 100%. just thought i was one of the boys you yeah know? they were like this guy's cool yeah, we yeah with him. exactly yeah. and so um what ended up happening is you know nine o'clock rolls around and i'm like man i, I gotta probably think about wrapping this up here pretty soon <laughs> pretty much came to the conclusion they're still gonna you know think about what they're doing sure. i was like hey rightfully so it's totally cool and um i ended up just at the end he was like well do you know of any other deals that could be you know a good fit you know in the area yada 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 and i always bring my laptop on listing presentations yes. because you never do and never know so never know. popped it open Great. um just started showing him some properties you know listen to his criteria mm -hmm. plugged it in the mls mm -hmm. you know pulled up some properties that i thought could be a good interest right and, you know interesting right and pulled a couple and he's like oh those look those look really cool uh can you get me in before 10 a.m tomorrow <laughs> and i'm like these are these are uh, these are four plus million dollar properties you know sure. sometimes agent wants to be present etc also but this is where our relationships come in which is helpful exactly yes. and i and i did know the listing agent thank god you know. i love when that happens i'll text yeah. and be like can you please meet me yeah. here at 9 a.m was one of them and, oh, and she was just like you know she's a good agent yeah, she's she a is. nice lady yes and so she ended up meeting me there at one of the properties and Amazing. he was like wow you know, this view is insane. You walk in through the front door, it's like, and you like, got again. him in that quickly. Yeah, like, and I again. got him in. Yeah. Yes. Just, you know, showing up. Right. Showing up. Right. And so he was like, wow, this is absolutely incredible. The business partner that he was with was like, you know, I, I don't think I'm in on it. Okay. So he actually ended up contacting some of his other friends. <sighs> You know, the whole time I'm meeting with them, you know, I know these guys are well yeah. off, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't really know, you know, what they, everything, what, yeah, everything. Yeah. Right. And so he ends up contacting some of his other uh, buddies, just like what real estate do. friends, uh, you know, so two families ended up purchasing the property and uh, yeah, they, they ended up making a cash offer a few days later on this $6 million oceanfront property. Meanwhile, you still have the other one that you're hoping to sell. Yeah. And that's, that's on the market right now as a, as a short term rental, they're, they're self managing it, okay. but that's, that's, okay. you know, a possibility for us to take over but management. But this is what that. came out of that. That's what came out of it. And then to take it a step further, they're also going to be renting that out as a short term rental, which is going to be grossing, you know, close to 500 grand a year, yeah. at least five, 600 grand a year. So yeah. that's you know, close to 100K in revenue for, for our company as well, managing it. They're going to let you manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So all off of, you know, a cold call. Dude, or, you know, so, I give you props because yeah. I'll be honest, I cold call is the one thing I just haven't been able to like get myself to do. Yeah. So, th but the people who do it, you guys do it well. Yeah, no, I and I'm not like I used to be super consistent about it, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not as. But now I do it more so if I have a purpose, right? If yeah. I know someone that's looking for something specific, right. or there's a specific product that I like, like I I tend to specialize yeah. in multi-unit and waterfront right. properties. I'm interested in that. I have right. clientele for that, and that so, comes through too. I, exactly. And also, then you have something to talk about. You're not just like, oh, uh, hi, do you want to like buy or sell? Like, no, no like, nobody that's wants not, nobody no. wants that shit. But no. if you're like, hey, look, I've got a buyer. Your property looks interesting. I mean, you could really yeah. get that rapport. I agree. Totally. I and I was agree. actively showing their their unit. You yeah. know, it was a short term rental. So it was like the next day I was like, Hey, can I go over there and show it? Yeah. And they're like, Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. And I got the code from them, showed yep. it. And like, you know, yep. they, they know that you're actively working absolutely. You know, to get the business. Definitely. I think that's the the main thing with any business, real estate. You've got Anything. to put the work in and show that you're willing to take the Correct. initiative before Correct. you get anything out of it you, know, yes. you gotta you know have that vision. and again we've talked about this so many times um comes up almost every week like people don't always necessarily know what we do or it looks like we're just flipping lights on and showing beautiful homes and getting all this money and that is not the case <laughs> like you know you yeah. are you're putting in the work and you're doing it so right it's yeah important. yeah it's that's all the back like showing that house yep. was not that complicated no. you know but negotiating the deal getting it under contract funny enough that that very property when we were under contract mm -hmm they ended up getting a backup offer close to a million dollars over where we were under contract. Whoa. Yeah. Which happens. 
I don't know if it was just that that was like a hundred percent true or if like that was just like to get but, a tactic, but like, regardless. but they did have backup offers. I know that North of where we were under contract. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes they have to procure that. They have to show you like, Hey, look, this is like what I've got. You know what yeah. I mean? So and like, I, I don't it. think there would be any reason to, you know, no. fib, fib about that. And no. so no. it was, it was a really good deal That's for amazing. them and they're, they're really excited about it. And awesome. yeah, it was just a cool success story, you I know, love that. really awesome clients. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I know. I, I feel like I need, I, I just love your energy. Every time I like go to one of your listings, I'm like, hi, Monroe. <laughs> I do. I just love it. Well, I appreciate so you're that. still working with them. Oh, now you're going to obviously be doing it with Tide and be able to manage that. What's another one that you have? Yeah, let's see. So I, I think th- this is actually a really cool story. I'll talk about um, a couple listings that I sold on uh, San Rafael. Okay. These properties were in Mission Beach. Yep, so down the last Mission. one was Sunset Cliffs. These are in Mission mm-hmm, Beach. Mm-hmm. And uh, past client. Right, okay. decides to list their property with me. Okay. They were doing a 1031 exchange. That's where I met him. It was initially a realtor.com lead. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Had you done, had, did you used to do realtor or do you still I, do that? I did. I don't still do yeah. it. No, I don't really buy leads anymore. Same. Uh, but there, there was a time ago, in 2018, 29, like it was absolutely same. Zillow. Realtor.com was yep. crushing. So, yep. yeah, I definitely yep. was Agreed. buying a lot of leads. I think my spend got up to 10 G's a month at one point, which yeah, was, I think ours got, I, close I trimmed to it that. back. I trimmed it back yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. Be, but, yeah. um, because some know, of that the, was like the, running around, like kind of wasting your time a little bit. Like, and then some of them were really good. And I yeah. still have some of those clients today. Totally. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, you know, it was a 1031 buyer. And wow. they ended up buying three properties in Mission Beach oh uh, through me, which was amazing. Awesome clients. Realtor.com lead. Realtor.com lead. Paid for itself. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And so then they decided to relist their property with me, you know, a year or two later. It was probably right. a couple of years later. Yeah. And this was in 2021. The market really started to pop. Yes. And you know, I think towards the beginning of 2021, it really started like the momentum really, really Ramped started to ramp up and pick yes. up like yes. crazy. Yeah. And so. Even through the end of 2020, it was nuts. It was. Yeah. It was. And so I knew that the the spring of mm-hmm. 2021 was just going to, you know, really pop. It was so on fire. Zillow was, for example, estimating this property value at, you know, 215, okay. which really wasn't too too far off. It was a 1,500 square foot house in, okay. in Mission Beach. So the price per square foot, like it was, you know, that, pretty that was spot on. pretty easy to comp. It's not always, but a little easier to comp out, single family detached, three yes. story, 1,500 square foot. That's like profile of For a lot sure. of the properties down there. So sure. Zillow was clocking in at around uh, 2150 based on the comps. And I was okay. like, well, I think we should list at 2195. Okay. Keep it under that two 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 mark. Yeah. List it as a coming soon. It's a logical thing that happens. Of course, with pricing. Yeah. yeah, especially in that I don't want to say lower lower range, but it, it starts to matter. You know that 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 for us 50, in some 50, of those 50, areas 000. that is yes anything it, uh, under yeah. three like it's yeah exactly. totally so yeah. basically we ended up listing it at two one nine five and I list it as a coming soon. I get a call okay. direct from a buyer. The guy's very interested. I can tell he's all cash buyer. Okay. He's like you know I want to make an offer. You know, can I come see you and and meet and you know meet you at the yeah. property? You're like, sure. And um, so I think we ended up showing it to him. I listed it like the next day or something because okay. you have to with the coming soon listings, yes. right? Yeah, you have only so um, long. Yeah. Yep. So I showed it to him, met, met like bottom lunch, and he was like, "Okay, I want to put in an all cash offer." He's like, "I'm a broker. He lives up in L.A. He's like, okay. I'm a broker. He's not actively selling anymore. Sure. But he's like, I want you to write the offer." And so, so I'm obviously incentivized. He's like, then you'll get both ends of the commission. Of course. Right. And so I was like, okay, well that's, that's awesome. And he was like, I just don't want to mess around. You know, I'll offer close to asking or asking. Right. I can't remember. He's not trying to negotiate and he's not hard. He's not lowballing, but he's definitely like, you know. Yeah. He might've been offering like, you know, 2.2 or two one fifty somewhere in that range. I can't okay. remember the exact, the exact initial offer, yeah. but it was close to or at asking. Okay. And he was like, I just want, I want the sellers to, you know, take the offer. I don't want to mess around. I don't want to wait. And I was just like, I understand that, you know, that being said, I, I promised the seller a process. I said that we would test the market. I said that we would list the property Mm -hmm. and see where the feedback comes. Right. And this is where it gets sticky when we sometimes have to double end it or what have you. And I remember being like going back and forth in this in my mind. I'm like, do I just tell the seller like, Hey, like, you know, this is a strong offer. We we should really just accept it. Well, because statistically Mm -hmm. your first offer is usually the best one. Not always, but usually. So that's tough. And and it also depends on the market you're in though. Considering it was a coming soon. Right. Not as a coming soon. As an active listing. Yes, maybe. But as a coming soon. Touche. Is a coming soon? Maybe not. So I was like, you know, That's ba- basically I, I talked to my, one of my mentors about it and mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I'm real, I'm going back and forth and he's like, he just stops me. He's like, move yourself 
remove yourself from the equation. Remove your commission. Stop thinking about your commission and the answer will always become crystal clear. That's true. And I was like, okay, my intuition is telling me the market is hot right now. My intuition is telling me like, hey, we're probably going to get multiple offers. There's nothing else on the market like it yeah. right now. Inventory is crazy tight. It still is. I mean, it, it, it still was, is. It's really bad. At that time, I think it was even tighter. Yeah, it might have been. Behind the Lockbox is sponsored by Property Showcase Group. Property Showcase Group has a team of creatives, directors, producers, editors, marketing specialists, and designers that work in tandem to tell and share stories of the built environment. Whether you're looking for full service production or simply just in content creation, Property Showcase Group can help take your business to the next level. To learn more or to contact Property Showcase Group to schedule a consultation, you can find them at propertyshowcasegroup.com. That's spelled P-R-O-P-E-R-T-Y-S-H-O-W-C-A-S-E-G-R-O-U-P.com. PropertyShowcaseGroup.com. And so I was like, you know what? I, we're we're going to list it. I, I talked to the buyer, said, hey, we, we are going to put it on the market. I'll keep you, you know, updated every every mm-hmm. step of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, you were our first offer. I appreciate the offer. Right. I just, I, I have to, you know, stand by my word. And, right. You know, and you right were resp- representing the seller first and foremost. And 100%. Yeah. Yep. So yep. we end up listing it. And this property ends up, I think we end up generating like five or six offers. <sighs> And it ends up, I end up negotiating it up to 2,350. Wow. So 155K over where our first, 155 to 200K over right. where our first offer came in at right. that right. coming soon offer. Yep. And I was like, okay, well, good thing I listened to my gut instinct here. Always. My client was capped out at, you know, below where our highest offer was. Right. And I just said, you're the buyer that came the buyer to like, that I was, was like, Look, this with. is as high as I can go, like whatever. Yeah, Ex- exactly. Yeah. And so I just, I, I said, look, you know, I, I looked at my commissions and, and I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to credit you a, a good chunk of my commission. That's going to get your price up to competitive with the other offers. I'm still going to walk away with 10 additional thousand dollars out of this deal. That's wonderful. And so if, I, if so that he could compete, if he so really that he could compete, to. yeah, so that he could compete. I said, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a, a credit back because I'm already getting commission on the on the of seller course. side and I'm securing him in in a neighborhood that I live in and, and I he work came to you first. And, and also, yeah, exactly. Again, let's sidebar this for a second. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what you should have done. This is exactly totally. what everybody should do. You have to remove yourself from the commission. And we don't we haven't really talked about that at all. Brett has always told me that every mentor I've had has always told me that because it's not that we purposely get stuck on the commission, but there is something that happens. Like you're like, Oh my God, like, okay, it's stressful. And a buyer comes straight to you. And of course you're doing those numbers in your head and you want to make them happy, but you want to make the seller happy. And like exactly what you did is what you should have done because you still made good money. Like you said, you still made 10,000 more than you would have. Exactly. And we don't need to be greedy. And like this guy came to you first. He really, 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 really wanted it. Yep. And those other offers were great, but like, also there's something with him. He wanted to close. Like yeah. you could have gone with another agent who necessarily, they could have nickel and dimed you guys in the inspections and all yeah. this other bullshit. And like, it wouldn't have closed or it would have been awful. You go with the devil, you know, sometimes he you could know? have also represented himself. Exactly. <laughs> he he a, totally could He was a have. broker. So essentially I was just so rolling you his at own. all of those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you're a broker. You could have represented yourself, could have rolled, rolled your own commission. So here, I'll roll my commission into your, uh, for, to yeah. increase your purchasing. I'm walking we away with an win. extra 10,000 and I'm securing you as a client in my farm. Now, so here, that, the story's not over. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So what ends up happening out of that, you know, act of good faith and doing the right thing by my client. Yeah. And the buyer. Yeah. My my phone rings one day and it's the next door neighbor that calls and he said, hey, you know, I'm curious if you have if any of the buyers were thinking of selling, don't want to actively list the property. But if any of the buyers that submitted offers on the, your listing, sure. if they're still looking. So did you close that deal with your buyer then? I did. You did. So double okay. ended that deal. Okay. Neighbor, and then the neighbor, neighbor calls. calls me, says, hey, do any of those buyers, did you, re- you receive multiple offers? Obviously you sold it 150K. And that's why he called me because right. he's like, you just sold that at 2350. Yeah. Like that house is worth like 2-1, right. you know? Right. And so he called me and I, as a, I was like, well, as a matter of fact, we do have other offers. We had five, dude. Yeah. yeah plus, yeah. you know, a ton of open house leads. Mm-hmm. So I start calling through everybody. Mm-hmm. And one of the offers that missed out on our listing 
ended up writing an offer on that property off market with a de- with another agent. So I'm representing the sure. seller off market. So you didn't market. double end it, but you were able to do it, right? And he was doing a 1031 exchange and he had like, it, it, the, the clock was ticking for him. Oh. He still hadn't identified anything else. Yep. So he ends up purchasing that product. Exact same model mash. Get, guess how much we ended up selling it for? Two five. Two million four eighty five. Ah! Oh! Or 84. So, whatever. So close. You're really close. I mean, really close. I just know how this shit goes. Yeah. Like you, I mean, Bonkers. that's where the market was going because we yep. had no inventory. Yep. And it was also nuts. off market deals, they're worth a premium. They're worth yep. more because again, you know, it's, it's also a scarcity kind of situation in your mindset where you're like, if this goes to market and that one sold at two, three fifty, and I know mine is nicer. I don't know if that was the case. I don't remember. It was but- actually not as nice. <sighs> Which was so indicative of where but the he was doing ten thirty one exchange exactly. as well. Exactly, so but he was doing. T- they had to do it one hundred percent. Yeah, and all those other factors come into play. And and sometimes people don't want that. They want to do. They want to put their own stamp on it. They want to make it nicer. Do whatever they want to do with it. Right. So, totally. dude. And we're going to be managing that one as well. If I could reach yeah. you, I'd high five you. <laughs> so that's so amazing. yeah. So that that that's pretty cool. You're that's giving me cool. life yeah. today. Like yeah. it's been. <laughs> I mean, look, we've all kind of had a rough year, you know, I mean, we're closing deals and we're doing okay, but like also the state that the world's in right now, like there's just a lot of shit going on. And like, this is, I love this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm having my friends on because it, we get to talk about this stuff. And like, you know, again, people are hearing what we go through and how we're getting some of these deals done and how we're, you know, negotiating this and and the things that we're doing to put ourselves out there to make those deals happen for our clients. It's a big deal. Yeah connect awesome. share and yeah. inspire right I love so that. We're all here for. that's so i love yeah. what your mentor said i mean again that's the biggest mm-hmm. thing anytime yeah i tell myself that quite a bit anytime i'm stressed out i literally remove myself or i'm like yeah. don't even think about the commission you're gonna be fine yeah. money's mo- like it's gonna be all okay it, it clouds your judgment it does and sometimes yeah. we need it we need that deal to close because it's been a while or whatever the case or you know this is a really big right deal and this check is going to be more than some people make in a year and this could pay off all my debts or whatever that whatever the situation is right totally you have to remove yourself from it yeah. and every once in a while we get those unicorns i just had one recently and i'm so thankful because it it does breathe new life into us and we're like i double ended something and i was like yeah okay you know me and my team did and it was just so nice to like be able to do that you know what i mean because mm-hmm. it, it gives us the win that we need sometimes when all the other st- because tell me if you agree with this this doesn't happen anymore, but a $200,000 studio, which we don't have those anymore. We did years ago is the same amount of work, if not more than a $10 million waterfront. It is. And the clients matter the same. I mean, the egos and tactics can get a little hairy, but I got to tell you, I sold dolphin. If you recall the $7 million waterfront down in bird rock, right? That $200,000 studio that I'm referring to. Yeah. There was so many issues with the family and the mortgage and all that. It was more work than dolphin. Yeah. Again, not oh, always totally. the case, but right. it was. And I was like, I'm right. getting paid peanuts on this. And then yeah. I made a shitload on Dolphin in seven days. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but that was a three-year deal in the making. So that's, people then see that other stuff and they're like, oh, so easy to make. And I'm like, yeah, what you don't see is everything I've done on the back end for yeah. three years. And you know? everything you have to do to position yourself to secure someone that is going to buy a $7 million oceanfront. Correct. They're not just walking into an office anymore and being like, oh yeah, I'll you pick look good that, enough. I'll pick that one. Correct. It doesn't They happen, want someone you know, with experience. We yeah. look younger than we are. And they want someone that is going to do the work and be there for them and make the right decisions and do yeah. and, and that takes time and experience and you have to be able to prove that over time and with them or whoever, right? And so, yeah, that's a bitch. To- but, totally, totally. Yeah. But true. that unicorn I'm referring to, that was a year and a half in the making as well. So, you know, and I was with yeah. the seller through all of it. You know what I mean? Right. So it right. just, it's not overnight. Yeah. But. Once you, I feel like the escrow process is usually much smoother on the higher end deals. Sometimes. Oh, yeah, so, so, sometimes. Yeah, it, yeah. it just, it, it all depends. It just depends. We had one recently where yeah. everything was going smoothly. Uh, you might have walked in on to this house on Caravan. I'll tell you the the address when we get offline. It was our team's listing. Everything was going great. The inspector goes in and uh, they decide to basically chest the shower, right? Flood the entire thing. It was a historic home. Water starts coming through the can lights into a room that had like historic wood wallpaper, like all this stuff flooded the whole upstairs bathroom because he was testing the shower and walked away. And we were like, okay. And you know, it was like, got into escrow somewhat, somewhat quickly for how long we'd had it on the market. Like 
another top agent doing it. Like everything's fine. Buyer's quote. Like we know it's going to close. It's like a 10 day quote. Like it was all good. And then the house flooded, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then that shit happens and you're like, okay, so it happens. You it know does. what I mean? Yeah. But like they do tend when people have the cash and the money, mm-hmm. a lot of those guys are decision makers. Like again, the unicorn I was just referring to, he, we sold, we got it in escrow in 48 hours. I'll ask cash. He closed in six days. And he originally had like a two week close and he's like, oh, let's just close Friday. And I'm like, yeah, okay, let's just close Friday. Like, sure. Close Friday. Like, make yeah, it happen. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it just does. And so you're like, okay, anyway. Totally. No. Um. Okay, those were great. Do you want to play a little game? Let's do it. Okay, because this might incite some other stories for you. So the first question, so these are like three rapid fire questions that we ask. And then just like first thing that comes to your head, okay? What is the craziest or pettiest thing that's ever killed or almost killed one of your deals? A refrigerator seal. <laughs> when you, before you answered, you looked at me and I knew you were going to say something stupid. <laughs> a refrigerator seal that costs yeah. maybe a hundred dollars to fix. Yeah, maybe. Did you fix it? Well, the agent, because my clients just kept coming back. It was, I was actually representing the buyers. Okay. And the buyers were the ones that were like freaking out. Just, yeah. Yeah. They were, they were, um, very particular. <laughs> And, you know, they even said at the end of the show, they were like, I know we're rough. I know we're rough. And they were rough. You're like, I'm going to agree with you. She ended up driving up to, so the deal would close on time. She ended up driving up to LA, like, like at some crazy hour and to pick up this piece and and bring it back. Yeah. The agent did. The agent. And the seller was capped out on, you know, offering any more credit. So oh, that, thank so God the you had, so that you guys at least good had good agent. rapport. It was a good agent. A good and she agent. was like, no, we're going to, yeah. cause that doesn't. I don't, I don't know how, how good our rapport was after the deal. <laughs> she was, she was not. And I was like, Hey, I'm oh, sorry. But no. you know how sometimes it's, it's just like just, feathers get ruffled. It is. It just, it's difficult. And you know, we try to like keep it as civil as we possibly can. But there again, it's, we talked about this last week. Emotions run really high. Yeah, totally. She's like, I drove to LA at 3 a.m. for a fucking rest refrigerator seal. seal like are you yeah. kidding me yeah that's a good one we haven't had that yet we've had like termite like some other stuff no but, that, like, that was i remember like pretty there was like other little things but i just remember being at the viewing uh, and like you know it was during covid they've got like the buyers have gloves on and they're like checking out the seal and being like and i'm just like it like you know I, it was a it was a while ago but you're just like what the f you know, is happening right now yeah i was just like this is kind of this is it's crazy especially for all the crazy things we've seen we're like this is what's going to break your back. Okay. This is the hill you want to die on today? Pandemic. Great. Yeah. When everyone's, you know, not doing well, but okay, great. We'll get a refrigerator seal. Thanks. I know. What is the weirdest thing or situation you have ever walked in on? Weirdest thing or situation I've ever walked in on? Anything? I really don't have an answer yeah, for that. No. I think. Well, that's like, not true. I, d- I did. Like home people crashing in my. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm trying to remember like, I, man. Running through a, through a decade of, of stories here, just trying to think like you know we've we've all seen seen you know weird things. Um, I think one of the, one one time we just like ended up walking into the wrong person's house, you know during oh, shit. during a showing. Oopsie. Yeah. Like, I was sorry, like wrong I was like brand unit. brand new in the business. Yeah, and just kind of like walked into the wrong house. Was it down in PB? No, this Urban was Gym? actually when I was selling real estate in Lake Tahoe. Oh wow. Yeah. You're yeah. like, uh, this doesn't look right. Or maybe it, they're See, like having it's dinner. it's so long ago. I don't know if this is a story I heard from another agent or <laughs> it actually happened. So if it was actually I'm just trying you. to come up with something, you know? <laughs> well, we'll think it was I, actually, you. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think I have like that many crazy. I don't, I, I like stories. have some good ones, but like I've told them all at this point, I feel like, you know, and I'm like, damn, I need it. And like so many people have walked in and found like tenants doing drugs or like sexual toys and i'm like i haven't found any of that stuff but we're yeah. showing two nice of houses apparently which <laughs> i'm kind of sad i think maybe we should go slum it for a while i want to kind of like find some crazy yeah. shit in like middle of nowhere Show some more houses in hollywood or something Ooh, oh yeah you'd for sure find some shit up there okay <laughs> i'm interested in this next question for you if you could be anything other than a real estate agent what would you be and why probably a life coach or a motivational speaker you'd be so good at that <laughs> There's still time. Yeah. You're only 30. Why? Why? Just because I'm, I don't know, ph- philosophy, motivating people. I love that. You are, like I said, every time I see you, I'm just like so happy to see you. Like you do, you light up a room, you give people like Appreciate you're positive, that. like 
people like yeah. to do deals with you. They like to be around you. Like it's, it's so refreshing because yeah. it's not always like that. Yeah. Leaving the world a better place is yeah. one of my biggest intentions. So I hope your mom and dad are watching this. They should be so proud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to my mom you and, need and to pops. Send, yeah. yeah. You need I don't to send know it if he has a <laughs> uh, <laughs> podcast, but <laughs> You know, You're well, like, here's how you download the Apple podcast. Actually, Dad, it's yeah. already on your phone. Apple puts it on yeah, your phone. You're yeah. fine. I'll, fi- I'll figure something so, out. So just send yeah. him the YouTube link. He no, can watch 100%, it. He can the, watch it. The YouTube link. Nah, he's exactly. A, he's a great guy. Exactly. Su- super, super old school, you know? You know, yeah. I get it. Even my dad, I'm like, Dad, come yeah. on. My, my pops one time Click during, because during, uh, he's also actually a real estate broker. Oh, wow. Mm, where, so, where is he? Up in Crestline, California. Yes, okay. So okay. by Lake Arrowhead. Yep. Tiny little mountain town. Yeah. Definitely blast the pass. Um, he pulled out one time, there was like a power outage and the office is kind of like an antique store as well. Cause my family used to run a general store. So it was like Harrington general store. And then it like became Harrington construction That's and real estate. So cool. Yeah. And so did they have all this. Crestline yeah, or... I did. Okay. <laughs> I did. did you live in Tahoe then for a while? I, li- I moved from Crestline to Tahoe in 2013, lived up there for two years, moved down here in 2015. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Those are some but, beautiful places though. But I kid you not, he goes up into the attic, he's rummaging through a bunch of stuff, blowing dust off, God knows what. <laughs> and he comes down with a typewriter. And he's and like, he's, guys, we yeah. can still write the contract yeah. because I have my typewriter. And he's like writing contracts with a typewriter. <laughs> does he still have a home phone? I bet he does. Yes. Does he still have the, the oscillator? Um, I'm sure they have many of those, but that's not the one that they use. They've does he got still a, have an antique store? The, the the real estate office is still there with all the antiques in it. Yeah. Um, We need to go on a road trip. Like, <laughs> I love this. I love antiquing. Like, I mean, it's yeah. our child. Like, yeah. you know, I'm going to be 40 and my grandma for sure had the rotary phone and like typewriters. And okay. My, you're definitely younger than you look. I know. People think I'm like 20. I'm going to be, th- I'm going to be 40 in March. That's wild. I, I thought know. you were my age. No. I'm 30. I actually thought you were closer to my age. That's funny. Although you don't look like you're 40. You still have a baby face. Yeah. 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 30. I get, I get like 27 a lot. I get, especially like, when I shave. Oh, there you go. <laughs> like today. <laughs> like today. Yeah. I get, Oh, you're like 28. And I'm like, you're saying it weird. So I want to say that's a compliment. Like, thank you. But no, I'm going to be, I'm 39. Yeah, thank right. you very much. No. Like <laughs> it's when certain people like, Oh, like you don't. And I'm like, Hey, uh, I've that's been around pretty, like a that's decade. That's pretty crazy though. Good for you. Thank you. I know my parents. That's awesome. Well, dad, I love you, but he's now, he had jet black hair. He is now all white. Looks like Santa. We just, I just became an aunt. My brother had a baby. Oh, cool. Everybody knows at this point. I'm sure everyone is so sick of me talking about her because I'm obsessed. <laughs> but he, I'm like, are you going to dress up like Santa for her? Because I think you need to. So he, but he still doesn't. I think of my parents as like 45, but they're 60. My mom does not look 60, like does not. So wow. are I'm, they, they're European, like, like Eastern European? Or? Technically, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we're all like born here. My grandfather, my dad's dad came over from Poland when he was two. Mm. And my grandmother's family is from Ireland. And then my mom's side of the family is from um, like England. So oh, cool. Western Europe, my, my really, not Eastern. From but England. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's from England. From England. Yeah. So she has an accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, everyone loves my mom. Uh, I I feel like I love she, both she of them. She's adorable. Oh, yeah. Where does yeah. she live? Up in Grassline. Damn. Yeah. Let's yeah. go see them. I want to go yeah. meet that. I want to meet yeah. your dad and his typewriter. I want to go yeah. through their antique he, store. He's got a bar too, so it's pre- it's pretty cool. It's a sports bar. With how many it's other a motor, businesses it's a, does he it's have? It's a motorcycle sports bar, so Shut all motorcycle up. memorabilia. Oh. Yeah, he's got Evil Knievel's, oh. uh, for the the bike that Evil Knievel used to ride, the first XR 750 off the. No. Yeah, some stories behind that damn motorcycle too. They went all over the country finding parts for it, restored it, put it in his bar. Bar burns down. The bu- the bike was hoisted up above the, the mantle. The bar burned down? The bike was hoisted up above the mantle. He was leasing the bar from someone and he was like, you know what? You guys got to clean up this attic. My dad's in construction. He's like, you guys got to clean up this attic because yeah. it's a freaking ghost town. All this electrical wiring, something's going to something's gonna catch. Sure enough. Sure enough. Caught. Bike's hoisted up above the mantle on the fireplace, not able to get the bike down, but bar burns. Bike's still there. They take the bike down. Now they're in the process of restoring it again. Currently. Yeah. It's when, almost, did, when did it burn down? Oh, this was... Probably, years ago? Yeah, this is probably like over 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. But did the bike like melt and like get all burned or was it just it, like smoke It did, damage? but you know, the fire department came. It, 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 no, it, it, it burned, but you know... Waterlogged. <laughs> it's, like, it's metal. So they, yeah. they're, they're restoring it again. 
Yeah. That is so cool. It's kind of wild. Yeah. That is a wild yeah. story. Oh my God. I would love your parents. Yeah. I really want to, we need to go. We need to go see them. Okay. We're going to take a road trip. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's okay. do it. Let's thank you it. so much for being here. You're welcome. Yeah, All right. Thank you. This was thank good. And if you me. walk in great. on anything weird and you want to come back, you just let me know. Totally. Okay. I will. Perfect. I will. Right. Sequel. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening. Behind the Lockbox is produced and edited by Property Showcase Group. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or review this podcast. Thanks for your support. See you next week.